Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I hope you are enjoying your lunch. Uh, I hope you like spinach as well, because it's very rich of it. Um, I'm going to be talking to you in just 15 minutes about reactive applications with event sourcing and service end events. Included in this talk is a short live coding. It will be very short because I got a lot to explain in 15 minutes. So hold on to your lunch while we go through this. So first of all, why am I here? I'm one of the developers of Exxon Framework. I work at Exonic and I do a lot of open source stuff. I really love open source. I love working on it. And I also love sharing the knowledge that I have gathered over the years. It's been quite a journey though, because I started my career about 10 years ago or so. I was just this tiny little developer. I think I was 20 years old. And right at that time, I was working for a large company which was basing their software on JBoss. Um, I think we all know that it was rebranded to Wildfly later. We had Java server faces and it all kind of looked like it came from the year 2000, uh, which kind of makes sense. Then around that time when my career picked up, there was this push for more client-side applications. We saw the advent of jQuery to improve DOM interaction with the browser. We saw the event advent of AngularJS. And a lot more focus was put on the user experience of your applications. And slowly, by sure, slowly but surely, it really picked up and people started to expect more of systems and they become more complex. A little bit later, we started with the advent of microservices to really come into the era of distributed computing. We all know these stories from Netflix, how they divided up the services into microservices, distributing everything. But what this distribution entails is also eventual consistency. If you look at this diagram on the screen, you can see that this application consists of two pages. We have a personal page where people can update the personal details, and we have a team page where people can adjust their team. Now, when someone adjusts their name in the personal details service, it takes some time for that change to be propagated to the team service in order for it to display the proper name on the page when it's retrieved from a REST endpoint. This time is the eventual consistency I'm talking about. It might be five milliseconds if the service is up and it's really fast. It might be minutes if the queue is down. This is the eventual consistency that we have to accept when we are starting to build distributed systems. When you're building distributed systems and you keep this in mind, it makes sense to start optimizing the different models for different purposes. And there was this guy, Greg Young, that actually came up with the command query responsibility segregation pattern, where you built multiple models, and these models have a specific responsibility. One is a model that will handle intent to change the system, which we call commands. These, this can be a create order command, for example. It's an intent to do something, which that model needs to validate. It's really nice that you want to change your name, but if it's more than 500 characters, it might not be uh, good. So it does need to do that validation. On the other side, we have the query models, which are really adept at handling queries. Back in the application I was working at, at the port of Rotterdam, we had this huge model that was serving everything. There was, I think, the GPA query that was defined in the Hibernate file was at least 20 line longs consistent of multiple joins, and that model was used as both query and command model. It was really inefficient. So if we split this model up, we can do it much more efficiently for both parties. But we need to replicate the changes from commands to the query model. For this, we can use events. If you use events as the source of truth for your application and your command model, then you can replicate the events, which are the decisions of the commands, to the query model, and then you build your query model out of it. Because you will keep these events forever, they're basically your audit log, the history of your application, your history of everything, you can also build new projections from scratch when you need it. So if you are building a new team page, you can just replay the past events with the personal details and create a new database structure out of it. For this, 
Axon Framework was created. So about 10 years ago, Allard Bowser created Axon Framework, which has the logo in the middle, which really supports CQRS in a very nice manner in Java applications, and specifically Spring. We're working on other integrations as well. It's best to determine these commands, events, and queries through domain-driven design. Since I only have 15 minutes and domain-driven design, I don't know if you've ever seen the book, the book is this thick. I'm just gonna show you a demo of how it can work. We're gonna do some live coding and in that, then you will see the value. And if you wanna talk more about DDD, event modeling and all that stuff, I have some suggestions for other great talks at DevOx this week. It seems I missed a crucial part. So if you have this query model, which is asynchronous from your command model, you want to propagate these changes to the front end. And we all know the pattern of just doing an AJAX call every second to check if there are updates, but it's not really efficient. So for a while now, there has been service end event support in the browser, which really is a nice way to support this. So if you have an initial connection, you can tell what you want updates for. These updates are then pushed back through the browser, which will allow you to update the UI. In the demo, you're gonna see where you're gonna use Axon Framework also for the query updates. And these updates are pushed to the browser, pushed into Vue.js, and that reactively updates the DOM, which will basically give a very nice user experience because you will see the changes immediately. Or well, uh, not immediately, there's a certain latency, of course, the eventual consistency. I think I'm gonna switch to light mode. Wrong file. So we can define these commands using Java classes. I'm using Kotlin here. So in this demo, I have a few classes that have an intent to change the system. In this case, I have a create account command in order to create an account. I have an add balance to account command to add balance to account from a transaction. And I also have a withdraw balance from account command. It makes it really clear what the intent of the message is in the domain. So this, account is handled by an aggregate. An aggregate is basically um, a container of a set of events which act as a consistency boundary for your decisions. When an aggregate is loaded to make a new decision, for example, when we want to withdraw the balance from the account, we load all the past events for that aggregate. Play it on that aggregate through event sourcing handlers right here on the in-memory model. And then we execute the command validating it. This will allow us to do validations like checking whether there is enough balance on the account in order to make a withdrawal. And otherwise we will throw an exception in order to propagate it back. Since the event store is append only and you cannot remove past events, that gives a very truthful representation of all the, ac uh, all the actions that have happened in your system. This is really briefly because I really want to focus on the service end and the reactive part, but know that the business decisions are made here. And I created a demo engine right here that will randomly every 100 milliseconds execute an action on an account. Either create one, withdraw money, put money in there as a demo. Right now, the demo application is running, but it's not showing any data. And that's because I don't retrieve any data from the backend. I have an endpoint here in the front end controller, but this overview doesn't really do a query. So let's fetch the balance. I have a get balance overview query, and I tell it to expect a response type. Of balance overview. This statement will tell Axon Framework to send a balance overview query 
and automatically route it to the correct query handler, which I have defined here. <coughs> However, I still haven't built my projection yet. And your projection can be anything you want. You can put it into a SQL database here, you can put it into Elasticsearch, MongoDB, whatever best suits your query model. So in this case, my query model that I'm going to build is going to be based on an in-memory map. So I'm, gonna just, I'm just going to uh, create a map of string, which is the account ID, to the balance. And I'm going to update that map on each, uh, on each event. So here I'm going to put the account ID. This is the initialization. During the account creation, there's only a balance of zero. And during the withdrawn and added event, I will set it to the balance provided by the event. So this event contains the amount that was abducted, the amount, and the new balance, which is the decision. And I will replicate that. Now, whenever we want to return a balance overview, I will query this in-memory map. So I will map the entries to a balance item. And if we reboot the service, we will see that the front end will now display the the balances. See, now these balances are here and I can keep refreshing it. And this is what a basic application does, right? Whenever you refresh, there's new data. We can do a little hack in order to automatically refresh the data. We can just do a set interval. And we'll automatically update, right? It's now reactive. But it's not really reactive because we waste a lot of resources doing new requests to the service. So we have the service and event thing. And for that we have subscription queries. So let's build an endpoint that returns a flux a reactive item. So I will make an overview, uh, sorry, a stream endpoint, which will dispatch get stream query. It will still be the same query, the get balance overview, which will be the initial result. But we now will define two response types, one for the initial response, which is still the balance overview, and the other for the update types. So each time there's an update, we push a new item. So we want to push a balance item. Now we have a query, and we want to send the updates to the front end. So we can make a f we can return the flux here, the updates, and we can um, map them to a server sent event of type uh, balance item. It needs a builder, right? The builder, yeah. It needs an uh, event called message, so the browser recognizes it. And it needs the data, which is the balance item. And now we will just make this as the return type once we build it. Let's just do it manually. Now when we restart, we will have a stream endpoint, but we won't have any updates yet, because we're not pushing the updates. For that, we have a query update emitter, and we can emit updates. So I'm just going to emit, since the time constraint, I'm just going to emit updates for each get balance overview, for each message, and then make it a new balance item. Now, when we restart, whenever there's balance added to the account, it will be pushed to the stream. And we can use that from the browser perspective. Again, due to time constraints, I've severely underestimated my time. 
which was to be expected, I will just get the solution here. So we can open an event source, which is the abstraction from the browser. What's happening? Ah, this is happening. This will open the stream endpoint and any items will be streamed to the browser. So you will see the update coming. From If you like DDD and event-driven systems, we do a conference in September and there's an unconference before that to discuss any event-driven, domain-driven design system topic. Also, thanks for attending. There are some great talks coming up related to this topic. Milan Diankov is going to talk about location transparency. Mark Klefter is going to talk about becoming message-driven, and Stephen van Bielen, my colleague, is going to talk about dead letter queues in event-driven systems. I hope you liked the talk. Uh, if you want to see more, I can give you a demo or any information at our booth in the conference exhibition hall. Thank you very much.